All right, so I want to talk to you today about how to dress appropriately for wet weather riding in the UK. Oh. Well, this is appropriate. In this video, I'm gonna give you my three best investments I've ever made in my bike or my kit that have kept me riding throughout the winter here in the UK. But wait, I hear you say, in the UK, the winter is almost over. But that's where you're wrong, because I always tend to find that even when we get as far into the year as like June, it's still raining, it can still be like 10 degrees, and I can still find myself using some of these things. So here we go. My best three investments I've made in the last 12 years of my cycling to keep me riding all year round, but particularly in the winter. Okay, in no particular order and also not sponsored, uh, we start with my daytime running lights from Exposure. Um, these I've been running for a good few years now. I even bought two sets when they came on sale at about £50 for the pair. Um, I probably have to charge them like once every two weeks maybe. And you know, I obviously ride a fair bit, so great battery life. Very reliable, super neat, I like how small they are and if they're relatively powerful. Okay, I don't know how well you can probably see that light right there, but, and because it's out of the way, it doesn't mean I'm covering the light at any point in time. The backlight has always been super secure. I just leave it on all the time, no matter what ride I'm doing, even if I'm off-road, I'm not actually using the lights. Um, I just leave it on there, because I know it's not gonna come off because the bracket's really good. Um, so yeah, daytime running lights, particularly when the sun is low, uh, it's very bright and it gives you that extra security. I'm wearing darker colors today, um, but also, you know, you can never tell what the traffic's gonna do. It helps a roundabout, junctions. Now, the other thing, I'm also not sponsored, is my Spat overshoes. Um, I've been wearing these for just over a year. They're pretty worse for wear, though, I have to say. Like, they are starting to come away, um, but, they are very, very useful. So I'm sure you've seen like online, but how the spats are a lot different to other overshoes in the past where they come up a lot higher. They look, um, well, they look a bit different. Let's put it that way. Um, and they work a lot better than most overshoes, I must say. For me, the biggest thing with the spats overshoes, these are the legals. Um, so they're the shorter version of the ones that virtually come up to your knees, uh, is that they're easy to clean, they're easy to get on, uh, unlike some overshoes. Um, they're very durable, uh, even though I'm using them off-road and I'm walking in them and I've kind of ripped the front, they still work as normal. Um, the only thing is that like, because they're so effective, and I think the reason why they're so effective is because, is because if you peel them down, you can actually see the difference in color there. Um, and that is sweat. But it's not sweat to the point where you're gonna feel cold. Uh, in fact, I've never ridden in these and never had cold feet. Uh, and that's been in sub-zero conditions, like minus five, minus six degrees. Um, and how I think they work, or at least how they feel, is they warm the blood around your calf. And then by warming that blood, it keeps your feet warm. So even if your feet get wet, which, yeah, inevitably they do. These actually keep them warm. Now, it's such a nice day today that I've actually removed one of the items that I was going to include in this video. So we have to head back to the flat and show you that one item. Or, well, actually, the two items that I never ride without. <laughs> now, so far, what I've listed has been relatively small investments. Bike lights, in the 50 pound region, the spats, the overshoes, also in the 50 to 70 pound region. These two garments, a little bit more expensive, but definitely worth it. Over on this side, we have my favorite rain cape to wear in real dull conditions, where visibility is key, of course. This jacket from Banner Climbers, who I am actually sponsored by, is by far the best jacket that I've owned for those types of conditions. However, if I have to ride 
in conditions where it's abysmal rain for five hours, you cannot look much further than grabbing a Gore-Tex shake dry jacket. Very small, very compact, extremely expensive unless you can get it at a bargain, but they are disappearing because of environmental issues. However, just putting it out there, it is one of the best pieces of like rain jacket garments for protection you can buy. It's just a shame. It's in black, it does have reflective strips, hence the daytime running lights. And now the final piece of equipment. I think you've guessed it. It's the mud guard. This is a mud guard I've been using for years, maybe the last 10 years. It's not the same mud guard, um, but it's the same model just being updated over time. It is the SKS Race Blade Pro. Now, the difference between the Race Blade and the Pro version is the Pro version is large enough for 35mm tires, I think. So it's just a wider version, basically. These, the way they attach to the bike, are very simple, very effective, very quick and easy to take off and clean. And effectively, just sit on there and just attach. Um, but because I'm running chunky tires at the minute, I'm not running these mud guards because these are 43s and the mud guards do rub a tad on them. So that's just something to be wary of. But that is it. Those are the things that I really do rely on a lot when I'm out cycling, and I just thought I'd share it with you. So if you've got anything you rely on, let me know in the comments down below. And uh, yeah, I'm going to clean my bike and my chain. It's filthy, and I'll see you in the next video.